how I feel today makes me feel a little bit better about how I performed on yesterday's deadlifts. Cause I am freaking smashed. And like the average lifter, average coach might say that, that means it's time for a deload, but it's max over bench day and we ain't skipping that and we're still gonna touch something heavy. Although I'd pick a exercise variation from max effort work that lets me dig my way out of this fatigue hole. And for that, brought my favorite bar of all time in from the basement to press with, because we got the angled multi-grip and the camber going on. But before we get pressing with it, sick of cookie cutter programs and copy and paste coaching, get the mentorship to learn how to coach yourself. Hit that link below, sign up for Team Activated. We will make you a better lifter. And if you sign up for the team before the end of September, you'll have a chance to win the American Cambridge Grip Bar from Elite FPS because I'm giving one of these away with our October team giveaways. That feels like a long way down right now. Even with today's primary goal being not burying myself in a fatigue hole, I'm not going to do that much different. So I'm going to work up with reps, warm up well, and when I get to the top sets, I'm going to make sure I'm taking what's right for the day. Also, we're using the narrow handle because I need more triceps. I hope I don't bite myself on the ass by saying this early, but I freaking love this bar. That did feel heavier than I would have loved it to feel, but goal for today, goal for any max effort day, stimulus, not weight on the bar. Yeah. Good enough that we'll go three. Good squeeze. Yeah. Felt yeah. good. Figure we'll go like 355. Yeah. Okay. Good. Wow. Yeah, that's heavy enough for the day. So hard rep, nothing ripped off. Don't feel like I'm gonna die. Mission freaking accomplished. And what's sick is that is 50 pounds off of my best ever on that variation, which doesn't sound very sick, but when you consider that 50 pounds off my best ever is the closest I've been to my best ever since I ripped the peck off, pretty fucking stoked. Anyways, we're doing JMs. And not pretty, but I'm okay with that. And it's like, with where bench gets sticky right now, with how that feels, with where JM used to be, that has to be like the number one priority that I need to get back as soon as possible if I want this bench to grow. Cause like everything pecky, like it doesn't feel great, but it's doing pretty okay. The tricep strength is what has fallen off with the surgery. But I also recognize that if I want to build these, I need to load them appropriately. So we're dropping down to two. I love the last rep on JM where you're just like, fuck, 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 I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, and then you get it back in the rack and you're like, ah. and I figure with how everything feels, gonna start digging into some incline dumbbells for my 
third movement of the day. Trying to make sure I pull that humerus across the top and get all the way through with it. And we're gonna see if we can hold same standard with 120s because bench ain't gonna grow itself back. And like I was talking about the JMs, like, tech still needs work, but that is so much closer to what it used to be, you know, what my JMs used to be, so that means that I need to be cranking harder to get the, that back, not the, that back, because, like, that's on its way. And me, comparing myself to where I used to be, like, you'll hear so many lifters coming back from an injury or coming back from whatever bullshit, and they're always like, oh, I used to be this strong, poor me. And, like, if you're whining about where you used to be, you're never gonna get back there. But if you're using where you used to be as a marker to motivate you to push and dig in and to track progress, that's how you're gonna find your way back. Okay, round two. Yeah, I'm okay with that. And I'm not skipping dips, but because later in the session, I'm giving them a little bit of a different treatment, which is gonna be higher rep, body weight, range of motion access. And we're testing the Sony low light capabilities again because lights are burnt out and ISO is at 20,000. That feels really gross when my arms and pecs are both Really tired. Set two goal, less pathetic. Still pretty pathetic, but at least we're working on it. And speaking of pathetic, I'm hoping that this machine and my ability to do a full rep gets less pathetic here in the coming weeks, but fuck. Yeah, still harder than I want it to be. But it's good because we're doing it. And doing it means we're going to get better. And because Cole's not here right now, I'm going to try to get ahead of him with some, I don't know, supposedly increased stability setup so I can dig in harder on a push down thing in Wobbers. Let's see. I'm actually okay with this. That's actually nice. I'm gonna keep doing these because this feels good. I'm not just running the cable into my face. I can like drag my head in against the pad, really dig in hard. Get a good squeezy squeeze. Mechanical tension, pump, all the jazz. I'm gonna go up. Feel like full stack is gonna be the move here. And like, the trick is setting up a pie, kind of getting stacked in position, and then you just kind of let go, slide down the bench. Yeah, that's the most I've ever enjoyed a push down. And I figure I'm gonna start touching a little bit more upper back with my rear delts. Cause I brought the prime handle cable attachment thingy in today, which is really nice for doing some 
rear delt biased, upper back biased, spreading handles apart kind of rowing. And I've been missing this. And like the trick there is like not only trying to pull, you're trying to pull as wide as you can as you go. And now we're going to finish blasting the shoulder glutes with the classic A raise, side raise, superset of shoulder death. <sighs> but look at that, I don't have to set the dumbbells down. And we'll finish up cranking some fronties. And I know everyone's already like, like, if you do a lot of pressing, you don't need to train a lot of front delts, but I have somehow managed to go my entire career without actually using my front delts on a press, and I think that's part of why my pecs kind of suck so much. So trying to bring the front delts up to make the pecs a little bit more protected in that bottom end. Stoke the bench is coming. And running more of these seated on the bench so we don't have to get on the floor. Fucking be glass too close. There we go. Okay. Those are hard. And there we go. Feel better and more alive and more awake now than when I walked in the gym. So mission freaking accomplished. And kind of like I was saying yesterday, like bad days, they happen, but they don't freaking matter in the big picture because you can bounce back this fast. You can still accomplish something on a day where you are fatigued. And if you do it right, you can shake out that fatigue so freaking fast and get back on track. And I think knowing how deadlifts this week felt, I still want to make sure that next week I do really keep it the pocket on pulls. Probably gonna be a little bit smart with exercise selection this week and on squats, but I'm, I'm excited to keep building momentum. I'm excited to keep getting this figured out. And I'm excited to keep just doing freaking work until my leverages and stuff work at this body weight. So guys, that's what I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want help with your program, if you want help with your technique, if you want help with figuring out how to navigate your way through a powerlifting career, hit that link below, sign up for Team Activated because my job is to make you better at this sport. Peace out. Have a good night.